Hey guys, I'm Emily Powers, and today we're going to be painting this owl um, portrait. Um, it, I think it might be like a great horned owl, but I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on animals. But um, you can see the picture in the corner there. And I just um, already pre-painted the um, canvas with cadmium yellow medium. And I just pre-drew it. I'm going to show you how to draw it, but you see how like many mistakes I made. So I had to keep, you know, erasing it and redrawing it just so that I could get it. Um, I could show you the drawing faster if I, it would have taken who knows how long if I actually tried to show the drawing. Um, so having it pre-drawn is just going to help me go a little faster. Um, so it's acrylic, it's going to be acrylic painting like we normally do. Um, the canvas panel is a 9x12 um, Phoenix canvas panel. And the colors we're going to use are titanium white, unbleached titanium, cadmium yellow medium, which is what I already pre-painted um, the background with. And then this is light green permanent, that green there. Um, you could you know, use phthalo green and add some of the cadmium yellow to it, but since I already had it pre-done, um, a pre-mixed color like that, and there's not a whole lot of green back here, I just thought I would use that instead. And then this is ultramarine blue, red ochre, or you could use burnt sienna, um, burnt umber, and mars black. So if you don't have those exact ones, just get something similar. Um, just make sure that it's, um, you know, like the blue, this is a more of a purple blue, so if you have like phthalo blue and you don't have the ultramarine, you might want to add a little bit of purple to it to make it more of a purpley blue like that. Okay, so I'll just show you the drawing real quick. Um, I use watercolor pencils or water soluble pencils or chalk, things that will rub off because you can see how many times I rubbed it, all this green is because I'm using a blue pencil on a yellow background and I'm scrubbing it off. So um, if you make a mistake with any water soluble pencil, you can just take your um, rag, wet it, and wipe it off and that will um, help you not uh, to be able to adjust things. If you use a um, graphite pencil, you can't wipe it off like that and then when you paint over it, the lines might show. So, at least that's what I've heard. I've never actually used a graphite pencil for um, for this. I've always used this, but it works, so I'm not going to ch change it. Um, so, it like I said, it took me a while to do the drawing, um, but I think I finally got it to where I'm happy with it. So, um, I'm going to try to make it um, easy to understand. Um, so, if you mark the middle, that's like right kind of where the eye is or where this is coming down is kind of where the middle is. And I did not, even my proportions are not exactly um, like the picture. I'm not a professional, I'm just showing you what I know how to do. So um, I'm. this is just kind of where the eye is, is in the middle. And then, so you could just like put a dot there um, showing the middle section so you don't lose it. And then if you mark the quarter mark, then the edge of the face is going to be like um, a little past the middle of that. So if you do the fourths, split it in half, then it should be like in this middle section. Um, it's not exactly like that on the picture, but this is my my drawing. So, um, and then if you mark it in half. Uh, quarter this way, the head's going to come a little bit above that, and you can just kind of go around and down, and it's going to come a little past the halfway mark. But then here, it kind of it goes there's like a curve out, and then a curve in, and then a curve back out again. Um, so the um, it curves in. Right about in this area where it curves in is where the beak is going to kind of be. It's kind of how um, how I figured out where I should put the beak compared to the eyes and everything. And then the 
this side just kind of comes down and out um, around the halfway, maybe a little lower than halfway. And then there's like the wing is like back in here. I think that's like the wing or something. And then um, it kind of makes like this heart type shape, like, like that. Um, so there's going to be two sections that come out like that from the sides. And this one's going to be like close to the edge. This one's going to be kind of farther away. And then once it gets here, it goes down like that. So it's not like a perfect heart, but then the feathers kind of start going that way. And then the um, this area is kind of pointing towards the corner. So you kind of put your pencil like that, um, pointing towards the corner, then it should be kind of right in here, and it kind of goes in and... It's a little, it's not completely straight because you want it to cut off the eye some. And then there's this, looks kind of like an eyebrow. I don't know, that's, <laughs> it's not really what it is, but these like feathers that come out. And then this side um, points over here, so it's kind of like on the third, maybe a little past the third in this area. So you point your pencil that way. That's going to be where that one is, and then it comes out like that. They're kind of like banana shapes, almost. And then um, the eyes are kind of like in the middle of the canvas, and this one, um, you're seeing it's more of a circle, and it gets um, kind of cut off. There's like some feathers that come this way. And since this is curved, it kind of cuts off. And then the, they're really big eyes. Owls have really big eyes, so don't go too small on the eyes or else it won't look. It would probably be better on an owl to make the eyes bigger than they are than smaller than they are. Just because their eyes are so big. So um, then across um, is going to be this other eye. But since this one kind of slopes in more, this one... It's going to have a slight curve, but it um, where this one starts is going to be um, lower than this mark, but higher than this end of the eye. So kind of like right in between there, across, is where it's going to start and slope up. And it's not as rounded as this one. It's a little um, more ovalish. And then it comes up, and it ends up higher than the end of this one. But it's very dark back here, so it'll end up, um, it might, may look a little funny at the beginning. Drawings, before you paint it, tend to look funny to me sometimes. But um, they tend to look better once they're painted in. <laughs> so um, just try to get your drawing is, you know, try to get it to where you like it and then start painting it. Okay, so then the nose, uh, the beak is right um, like in between the two eyes so it actually kind of starts like across from here so it's kind of like in here is where it's going to start right below that eye across see where it starts and then it goes around and down and comes to a point and then comes back up and then quickly curves this way and then there's like the nose holes are right there so that's kind of the uh, and you can kind of draw in um, the direction of the feathers so that when you're painting it you won't you know start making the feathers go one way or the other where they're not supposed to go so um, the feathers on the head just kind of go up and then in here they go out from the eye, and then once they start getting in here, they just keep going straight around. So straight, and then they start rounding. Okay, and then it kind of looks like he's got a mustache or something <laughs> right here. It's kind of funny, but um, and then this is just kind of all dark. 
this is going this way. This way. And then this is kind of curving until it gets straight off the back. And then these ones are curving this way. Okay, so that's kind of the basic owl. So actually I didn't sh I didn't say the brushes I was using. Um, I'm using a 3/8 inch Deerfoot stippler and 3/8 inch um, lunar blender. Um, the lunar blender is good for like the feathers that are kind of small, like on the top of the head. And then I'm going to use this um, for like the background. Um, kind of the background's kind of sort of the backgrounds we've been doing like on the big roses and like the leaf that I did. Um, but we use two brushes for those. We use the mop and then like a filbert. So I'm going to try to show you how to do it um, with just the one brush and kind of scrubbing in it. And then I've got a 3 8 inch angle for the filling in and a round brush. And I may use this smaller round um, if I need a smaller one for like the details on the beak or something but I'm not sure if I'm going to need it or not. Okay so I'm going to start by spraying my paint. That will help the paint stay wet and it's just water in here. This is like a little hairspray bottle that I got. So, um, so I'm going to get the deer foot and I'm not going to wet it because um, these work better dry. I mean, you might you might dip it just a little bit in the water. You might do that, just dip it a little bit and then get it off just so it's damp. And, and I'm gonna just get white at the beginning. And we're just scrubbing it in. And it's okay if a little bit of that yellow shows through because there is yellow in the background too. And there's actually a little bit of brown that shows back here. So I'm getting a little bit of the umber and it kind of a little bit of the ultramarine blue and then I'll turn it more like a gray bluish gray okay and then I'm going to get some of the yellow with the white and just start turning it yellow Don't worry about going into the owl. We kind of we don't want a halo around it, so we're gonna kind of go a little bit further into him than we need to, so that we don't have a weird line there. And then it's kind of turning it green because of the blue. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the green and put it in there. We can go over these areas too. And you could use a different colored pencil if it's turning it to green um, when you go to do this part. Of course, I guess if you're at this point already, you probably already did the drawing, but you could al also do the background first and then draw this on top of it if you didn't want to go around them. So that's something you could do.
And you want to make sure that this area over here doesn't dry before you get to it. Try to get a little bit more of the green and a little bit of ultramarine blue. It's kind of a bluish color. Add a little bit of white to it so that it'll not look so see-through. And then I'm going to get the burnt umber and um, ultramarine blue and make the gray again. There's gray back in here. And I'm going to get a little bit of the white. Then that that light green permanent with white for the edge. So it's a little because this brush is a little bit rougher than a mop brush. It's gonna come out a little bit different, but this will show you kind of the difference differences between them. You can do it with this if you can go over it a second time too because. probably needs it. Okay, I'm going to go with the burnt sienna, or the um, red ochre, it's not burnt sienna. Or you could use the burnt sienna if that's what you are using. And here's that pocket over here, and I'm going to get the unbleached titanium. And If you hear the uh, noise in the background, you probably guessed that it's with rain. rain. It's been raining so much. I'm kind of ready for it to be sunny. Okay, and then I'm going to get light yellow, adding white to it. Like I said, if it mixes and there's other colors in here, it's okay. So we'll probably go back over this another time because it's a little muddy. It's got kind of colors in places it's not supposed to and it's a little bright. I need to kind of dull it down a little bit. Turn. Turn the colors a little lighter, like in here, it's a little bright. But um, we can rinse this brush out and fill in like the first parts of the owl. I don't really know exactly how long this is going to be. It's definitely a little bit of a harder one um, because of the drawing. Um, and it, I haven't painted it yet, but the painting might be a little bit harder. It's definitely not a beginner painting, but um, it may not be too hard for you. I don't know. Um, it's, yeah, it's definitely going to be a harder one. And the drawing, you need to get the drawing um, proportions right. But we'll see at the end how hard it is. Um, so I just mixed ultramarine blue and burnt umber with my 3 8 inch angle and I'm going to start 
filling it in. I'm going to get a little bit of white to cover the yellow. I don't want yellow in our owl. If there's a little bit that shows through, it's it's okay, but um, because there is um, we are going to put some like unbleached titanium in him, which is yellow, yellowish. Um, but still not going to be like this bright yellow color. Get a little bit more of the brown, the burnt umber. It's a little more blue than I want. I want it to be a little more brown. When you're doing this this kind of gray with the ultramarine blue and burnt umber, you can do it either more blue or more brown depending on which one you add most of. More of. I didn't say that right. Most more more of. <laughs> so I'm just doing this area around the face. You can get some unbleached titanium in the areas that are a little lighter, like in here. You can see this is the first coat. It's not going to look anything like what we want it to, but we got to get something on there first, so... With acrylics, you have to layer um, to get get it where you want it. You can't really just do one layer and it look fine. I mean, depending on what it is, you like a flower, you might be able to you can just put a few little things and boom, it's done. But with things like animals, for sure, you cannot just do it in one layer and it be looking like an animal <laughs> like especially with things with fur they have the ugliest ugly stages with acrylics you have ugly stages in most paintings not all of them like flowers don't tend to have very bad ugly stages but animals especially have really bad ugly stages because you have to put this dark first and then when you put the You have to put the light on top for the fur, so when it's all dark like this, this is going to be an ugly stage. It's not going to look good at all. It's going to be like a really ugly owl, but it'll look better. So if we had these dark areas in here, it'll help when we get the lighter colors on because it'll have some dark up against it. Okay, and then I'm going to get the Mars Black, I'm going to go up under here, where it's really dark, and put that in there, around the beak. This brown color again to start this side.
I've done an owl before, but it wasn't this close up. This is actually probably my second owl that I've done. And when you're doing something um, that you've never done before, like if you normally do flowers and then you go do a dog or a cat or something, it can be a little harder because you're not really used to, you know, having to do the fur and that kind of thing. But the more you do a certain subject, the better you get at it. So you may feel a little scared to try something new when you haven't done it a whole lot. But when you do it several times, you get a little bit more comfortable doing it. So you can see how ugly he is at the moment, but he will get better. This is kind of the point when you're going to start thinking that it's never going to look better and that you should just like stop now because it's not going to look better no matter what you do to it. But just keep going and it'll get better. I mean, mine doesn't look so good either. so. Okay, and I'm not going to do this area yet because I don't want, I don't want it to uh, get black in the paint if we do this background another time. And if your um, paint isn't flowing um, off the brush well, you can add some water to it. Maybe that you don't have enough water and it's not wanting to glide on there very well. All right. So I'm going to rinse the brush out. And actually, there's. there. Okay, so I'm going to get the black and the ultramarine blue and the white and just put the first little coat on the nose, the beak here. I keep calling it a nose for some reason. The beak, a bird nose. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm making it a little bit lighter so that I can see where the beak ends and the fur begins. And there are going to be like some feathers um, kind of around it, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. Okay, I'm going to rinse that brush out, and I'm going to get my bigger round brush, not the small one, but the one that's a little bit bigger. I mean, it, it's still small, but it's not as big as the other one. And I'm going to get the yellow and some of the red ochre to make the eye color. So I'm just going to fill it in all one color first and this is going to um, look kind of weird at first too but 
Um, that's because it doesn't have like any shadows or any highlights or anything. It's just all one solid color. So once we get in the other colors, it'll start looking better. white to it just so that it'll cover the yellow up. Okay, and then we'll do this side. Okay, and then you can wipe that off with the brush and get some of the bars black and fill in the eye. To me, the eyes and stuff on animals and birds is what really makes it look good. Like before they get their eye in, it's like they don't really look as good to me. It's like once they get their eye, it's like, okay, now they're starting to look good. <laughs> I mean, even at this ugly stage, it looks a lot better with the eyes put in than it does without them, so. Okay, and then I'm going to get that black again. Make sure you get a little bit of water. And there's like some really thick, um, it almost looks like eyeliner. It's like all around the eye. I'm going to stick my hand in that. There is actually some uh, feathers over that, so you're not actually seeing the eye that far, but... Alright, so you can see the eyes, I mean, if you go back before the eyes are put in, even during this ugly stage, it looks, <laughs> looks a lot better. Just put the eyes in there. Okay, so I'm going to rinse that brush out. And I think I could do more on the background now. So I'm going to get this brush again, the deer foot, and get the white. that in. You can go farther out than you need to so that when you get when you get the other colors to start blending it won't like get rid of all the white. Okay, and then I'm gonna get get a little bit of the red ochre, with some of the browns.
Okay, and then I'm going to get the yellow with the white. Like a light yellow. And don't be afraid to go over with your owl again because you're not going to mess anything up. It's, um, I mean, unless you go like way, way far, that might mess it up a little bit. But just kind of skim the outer edge so it doesn't look like he's got a halo of the old color. Okay, so I'm going to quickly work on this over here before it dries. You can see it's covering a lot better this time. And the gray again. Get that in there. Some of this red ochre then bleached titanium all around. Okay, I'm gonna rinse the brush out because it's got a lot of colors in there. those extra colors out.
Okay, and then the rest is kind of just the yellow. It's mainly a yellow background just with some greens and browns and grays kind of in there. Okay, so now we've got a much better background. It's a little bit more blended and smooth. It's, it's kind of funny with the yellow eyebrows. <laughs> Um, I think he's dry now, so we can go ahead and keep working on him. So I'm just going to rinse that brush out, try to get most of the paint out. If you know that, if you're painting at some point and you know that you're not going to use a brush, you may want to just go ahead and clean it out, but at the same time, if you go ahead and clean it out, you may end up using it later and you didn't realize you were going to have to use it later so you may have cleaned a brush for nothing but this is a suggestion if paint tends to dry in your brushes. Okay so um, I just cleaned my palette real quick um, from all the old paint. Um, it's a glass palette so I just used my scraper and scraped all the dry paint off. Um, so I'm going to take the um, I may take my, let me think, um, I'll take the, um, 3 8 inch Lunar Blender, and I'm not going to wet it, um, I'm just going to take the Mars Black, and burnt umber and kind of make like a dark dark brown and I'm going to put that in these areas that are dark I'm just scrubbing it sideways and like, um, you know, like in here, I may kind of slant it slightly this way or slightly that way, depending on the, Now I'm going to get some white and a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber just so it's not like I'm putting blue on the bird. I do want like a blue kind of hint in there. Okay, so it's like this light blue-gray. Scrub that in. And if you leave a little bit of the... 
color that was already there showing, that's fine. kind of skipping all over the place here. <laughs> I'm just putting in the light and the dark. Get this dark brown. And you're just going to kind of tap in some dark pockets. Even on top of the light areas, there are some little black spots that are like poking through. All right, so it's not exactly where I want it to be, but that can be like the first layer there. Okay, so I'm going to get this dark and take, take it and flick in it's thundering outside. Okay, so where it's darker. Put some of this dark so on the outside here and kind of in the middle here. And then try to get a little bit more of that color. Mix it again because I'm kind of running out. I don't want these colors to dry. I'm spraying them. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of this dark 
add some unbleached titanium to it to lighten it some. Just try to stay, keep this angle. Make sure you rotate as you go around. Take some of this, and there's some white that, or a lighter color that kind of comes down this way, and then there's dark against here. Scrub a little bit next to the nose just to cover that yellow up. Alright. And trying to see. I think I'm gonna just keep doing this brush even on this because it's kind of rough and bumpy, so get this light color. Scrub that in. You can kind of, you know, it's not going to be perfect on the outside edge either. You can kind of flick out. I'm just scrubbing. Gonna mix a little bit more. super solid color. I'm just kind of skimming it. See, that was a little bit too solid. But we can go back when it's dry and add um, some more to it.
little thicker in here. Make a little more solid colors. I'm gonna get the black. Alright, so you can kind of see um, the way we did that, um, the wing, I just kind of, um, I loaded it a little thicker and I did the light blue and then I put it in where the black spots are and then I got the unbleached titanium and it still had some of that black and kind of streaked through um, the rest of that blue so it's still, so it's got like a bunch of different colors kind of going on in there so I'm gonna let's see rinse this out and let's get these eyebrows looking more like an owl instead of yellow looking okay so I'm gonna get the 3 8 inch angle to put this in So on this point, um, you don't want a rough edge, so kind of flare it out a little bit. You can kind of flick, flick to the edge. So that you get some you get some uh, areas that are kind of coming out you don't want it smooth all right and then I already get some unbleached titanium Kind of put some of that in. All right. <clears throat> so I just kind of took the unbleached titanium and kind of put some little areas there that weren't. Um, so tight, they're kind of flaring out a little bit more there. Okay, and then in here, here's some black that kind of comes in there. And I'm not on um, this side, I'm kind of making it a little bit more um, a hard line, and this one I'm kind of flaring it out a little bit more. All right, and then I'm gonna get the unbleached titanium again. And I'm just kind of tapping it in. I want that to blend there. Okay, and then I'm 
a little bit more this area make it some white all right so now it's looking more like an owl than a weird face with yellow eyebrows <laughs> Actually looks like a cute owl now. It's still, uh, it's kind of like in between the ugly stage and where we want, to, want it to be. So um, I'm going to do another layer on the eyes. So I'm going to get the round brush again. And get the yellow and the burnt sienna for that like red color. And I may I keep sticking, I keep doing the eyes after I do this wing and I keep sticking my hand in it. <laughs> okay, so I'm uh, getting some white with it um, so that it'll cover better. It's still kind of see-through-ish. Alright, there we go. So now it's covering better, more the way we want it to. And if you get a little bit out, it's okay because you can go back with the black and cover it up. Okay. It's still not um, quite the way you want it because in the picture um, with the highlights and the different shadows and things, it looks kind of like glass, almost, you know. So, um, we're going to put like different colors instead of the solid color we've been doing. We've just kind of been painting it in solid. We're going to do it differently once we get, once we get to the point where we can work on the eye details. But now we have it covered, so we should be able to work more on the details next time. Okay, and then the uh, dark around the eyes. Do some of that now. There's still like some of that yellow green that we're seeing around the eyes, but when we put in the feathers and the extra eye details, we'll cover that up. All right, I think we're gonna work on the beak. Got it right that time. Um, I'm gonna do, first it's black at the tip. It's like really dark at the tip. And it kind of comes up in the middle. And then we can get like some of this light color. Kind of blend with it.
get some black kind of put some streaks in there I'm gonna get the ultramarine blue with like the grays that are on my brush There's like a blue patch over here I'm just kind of barely touching it and I'm gonna get the ultramarine blue and the black now put it in there Okay, and then I'm going to get white. And kind of put the lighter areas in here. I could probably do some more on the nose, uh, beak later. Um, but let's see, I'm going to get the black. And put it along nose hole here. The other side. Slightly smaller. Actually, maybe a little bit bigger than that because beaks a little bigger than I had it. Oh. So there's that. Okay, and I'm going to get the Lunar Blender again. And I'm going to go right up against that. It came out a little further than I wanted to. Okay. All right, so let's work back up here. I'm going to get this ultramarine blue color. I'm going to add a lot of white to it, though. It's going to be a really light blue color. And I'm going to put that where I want it to be really bright.
Okay, so it's getting there. We may need to put put some more dark um, dark patches because it's kind of getting really light and dark in there. Okay, so now I'm just kind of scrubbing up and down, tapping. places where it's not quite dark enough. this like dark spot in here. some of this lighter color and flick it out. Into this dark over there. And do the same thing over here. Just tapping like some little specks of color over in the dark areas. Okay. And I'm gonna get the black and kind of tap where it should be darker. I'm going to get some of this black and come up into here. Okay, and I'm going to get that light and there's just a little bit over the eye. actually coming out pretty good. I think it's going to look good at the end. Okay. I'm going to work on this face area again. Um, I'm going to get this lighter color and thin it out a little bit. So that it'll kind of 
you got the brush. to go up to the eye. We don't want a halo around the eye, we want it to actually go up into it. I'm coming from like both directions. Once, once I get to uh, a, a whole lot of color on there, it'll start getting thick and blending, but I don't want that. I want it to kind of skip um, so that it will look like, like uh, it's got some dark in between these feathers. Just kind of tapping in here, I'm kind of making the brush go in all sorts of different directions. And we get some of the dark, the brown, and put a little bit of it back in. Okay, there's some color around the eyes. gonna mix some more of this because I'm like running out I'm not getting enough on my brush now
just tapping in this area and flicking in the other areas. So I think this side is a little more shadowed. So I'm going to get some of the burnt umber and black. Just a little bit of black, though not like what we had earlier. It's more burnt umber. And I'm going to put that in these spots that are darker. I may not be able to do it now because that's still wet. So, let's see, there is a little bit of feathers that come out like that. Okay, so now on these outer edges, I'm going to take that light bluish color again. So putting this where the lighter is. So now I'm going to get the black and the burnt umber now that we got that light in there. And this is in the spots where there's some black or dark spots. some like stripes or patches of black on the head Alright, so he's looking pretty good. I like him. Um, I'm going to start take a little bit more of this the light color and put in some of that lighter. want some of the dark in the light areas um, just because he's not really you know there's not really any area that's just like pure one color and I'm going to take the unbleached titanium and add some warmer areas to him so I'm loading it more thick in this wing area when I do this part I 
don't want the wing to look like it's separate from the rest of the bird, but we want it to, you know, look like, you know, there's a distinct separation for the wing. We just don't want it to be, um, you know, like completely curved. We want it to kind of be blended here. Scrubbing in this in the lighter areas, giving it another color. And I'll do a little bit like around here, not on top of the head, but. He's looking pretty good. I mean, really, at this point, um, you may want to do like a little more on the eyes, but you could kind of call that good. Um, it's, you know, it's actually not very bad. Um, it's kind of close to what we want. There is a little bit more lighter right there, though. Let's see. All right. All right, so rinsing that out. Now we can get in with the details of the eyes. So um, I'm gonna take my small around now. And I'm gonna use the same two colors you've been using, the yellow and the red ochre. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave one um, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to it to neutralize it just a little bit. I'm going to leave one like that. And then the other, I'm going to add some more burnt umber to it with some of the burnt sienna. So we got like a dark color and a lighter color. Add a little bit more yellow to this one. All right, so I'm gonna get the lighter first and I'll start on this eye. So I'm gonna get this around here. There's actually a little bit of like a really, really orange color. Adding a little bit of white to this yellow. And I'm going to put... Here, let me zoom in. Scoot everything to the side. There you go. You can see the eyes better now. So you got like a yellow spot in there and then go up and as we go up we're going to get this now we're going to switch to the darker color and put that in there now we're going to get the black by itself And see how different it is now. Actually, I could put some black over here. Okay, and then get that black, and you can add some water to help it flow better. Like that eyeliner 
more stuff around here. Darken it up. Okay, so it's a little thicker right under there. And there's like a little bit of this darker, the darker color, um, darker red. A little bit of it down there. Try to blend it though with the lighter. Okay, and then I'm gonna get the I mean yellow medium and some white. Not a whole lot of white though. I'm gonna put a little bit of that down there. Blend it. Then I'm gonna get the white and the yellow again. And it's got less of the muted color now. And just kind of tap that on okay so there's one eye and you can see the difference like that looks a lot more real than this one over here does and I'm gonna take my black now and go over this area. There's not really a, there might be a little bit of a highlight kind of up here, but um, there's not as much of highlight colors on this one as there is the other one. Alrighty. See, there's a little bit of color still showing through. Alright. Now we can work on the other one. Alright. And this one, I'm going to take the lighter um, orange that we used over here and put it kind of in the middle of all this. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the darker that we used over here and go around. We can kind of go do some streaks sideways okay and then I'm gonna get burnt umber and do like this shadow Put that over here. Okay, now I'm gonna get the black. And it's all in here. Get a little bit of that dark color. It comes around. And now I'm just getting the dark orange. Flicking some sideways strokes in there. Okay, so 
for now. We'll put the black, thin that black out, and put it in here. stuff right here. Now he's really starting to look good. And he's got this thicker And then we're going to do some like, highlights. Um, so we're going to get all this middle black still wet. We're going to get some ultramarine blue and some white. And a little bit of the black to neutralize it. And we're going to put that right in here. And I want it darker at the bottom. I mean uh, darker at the top. I want it to be the lightest color at the bottom there. I'm going to get the ultramarine and add it make it a little bit brighter. some blue to it once it's dry to make it a little bit more blue. Okay, and then I'm going to get that um, cadmium yellow medium and white again. And while this is wet, I'm going to kind of Streak some of that in and I'm going to get the orange and kind of put back any areas that are like too bright or there's too much of it. Okay, and then we're going to get Um, we're gonna let's, let's rinse the brush out because it's kind of got orange and stuff in there still. Okay, so I'm gonna get the white and just add a little bit of the yellow to it. Okay, and there's gonna be really bright. And get some white, really bright right there. go. So there's that. Okay. I'm going to zoom that out. And that's about it for the eyes. So I'm going to zoom back out. Move everything back over. Way it was. 
Okay, and we don't have a whole lot left, so I'm gonna just finish it off here. So I'm getting that black. Darkening that up some. I'm gonna get that unbleached titanium. Putting that in over these areas. I'm gonna take the black again. And just put some specks black and then let's see. I'm gonna get some white and put it right on the edge. And then the unleached titanium. It's a little lighter here. Okay, I'm gonna get the unleached titanium over here too. Join the specks down this. Okay. So there you go. You just kind of put some um, more black to cover it, then the white and the unbleached titanium for the lighter part, and then just kind of speck some black over sideways. Okay. So I'm going to scrub in like the last layer, so I'm going to get some white. Pop it in here. So it's making like little dots on here. Okay, then I'm going to get some more white for in here. I'm getting a little bit of ultramarine blue. And then 
just going to kind of scrub on here. Okay, so I'm just kind of making the nose um, beak longer up that way. I'm tapping in some darker and lighter around it. Okay. that all right and I'm gonna get some of the black and kind of scrub it sideways along this get some of that sideways um, look to it got some like sideways black stripes and some of the lighter feathers getting the white and flicking. Alright, so now I'm going to get some of this ultramarine blue and water. Okay, let's see. I got too much water in my brush. Okay, take that ultramarine blue and water it down some. Okay, I'm going to tap most of it off. Then I'm going to put um, these, this hint of blue in the nose and in this area up here. like blue light hitting him so I'm going to grab in some blue in these right areas okay and then there's like some blue in that highlighted that um, eye just in that one Alright, I think that that's pretty good for 
this owl. I think I might take just a little bit of white and dab most of it off and then kind of scrub it in to the beak. But yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. And actually, it's only two hours. That actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. I mean, I don't know. I, was, I wasn't I was sure. I was thinking it could take an hour and 30 minutes and be kind of quick. Or it could be like, you know, two hours and 30 minutes. So I wasn't sure really exactly how long it was. So I guess kind of in between. I guess, I guessed. Okay. So I'm taking my uh, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen to sign it. And you want to go at least a finger's width away from the edges. Alright, so there's the owl. It is like so cute. I cannot believe that it came out so good. I mean, in a way I can, but at the same time I can't. It's like, wow, it actually looks good. <laughs> um, so... This is um, what we just did, the owl, and so next week is going to be the beak path. So that one, this should be an easier project and it should be really fun. So if you want to see, and also these two are out already, so if you want to see those paintings, um, you can click on my channel name, Emily Powers Art, or my icon, the little kitten, kitty. Um, I don't know, by the time you watch this, it may have changed, if I ever change that to a different picture, but um, that's how you can get to my channel and check out the other paintings. So here's the dolphin that we did um, last week. So I do a new video every Friday. That one's a little bit of an easier one. So yeah, I hope you try this and um, check out my channel so you can watch some other painting tutorials. And thanks for watching. Bye.